Uh, we are going to go over our announcements. If y'all will follow along on screen or in your bulletin, the altar flowers are given by Sally and Lane Stevenson in memory of Sally's brother-in-law, Al Dwyer. And after service, if you would like to pick up some of them, you can. They are graciously giving them to whoever wants them. The Meals on Wheels, if you are a deliverer, they've changed the time and are now asking you to come to the office between 10.45 and 11 to pick up the meals. Challenger deadline is um, tomorrow, so if you have something put in the Challenger, you can email it or drop it off in the church office. <coughs> Excuse me. Still need help in the sound booth. We still have our same people up there, and I know they need a break. If you can do computer, it's very minimal. I think all you have to do is push the button, or if you can run the camera or the sound, they would appreciate it. They will train you for it, so let them know if you can help. We're collecting 80-ounce styrofoam cups and plastic forks and spoons for Providence House, and you can start bringing them to the church office today through uh, August the 12th. The Meeting Our Neighbors program, we have been doing that for several weeks, and they still need people signed up to go and meet our neighbors, to talk to them and find out what <coughs> we can do to help them. <coughs> The church equipment, if you've borrowed something, you need to fill out a form just so they can keep track of inventory. If, um, if you want to take something, it's, you don't, there's no charge for it, but they just need a name on a piece of paper as to when you're going to bring it back. <coughs> um, the midweek prayer service is still Wednesday at noon, if you can come to that. It's like 30 minutes. It's not very long. The blood drive is going on now in Fellowship Hall, and we really need anybody that can donate. They've only got four people to donate so far, and we only have a total. We're trying to make it to 10. So if anybody can donate, they will be there until 1230. And we'll let you leave church to go do that. Um, and that's all the announcements I have. You can do the choral intro. worship. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. Um, I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, higher than the heavens, your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. And please remain standing for a hymn of praise. I love to tell the story. Um, it'll be on the screen on page 156, and we're doing verses 1, 2, and 4.
please remain standing for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. And the third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. the children come forward for children's time. <coughs> and what was the big thing we, we learned? We learned that Jesus does what? He rescues. Anytime we need um, or sad or lonely or need anything, Jesus can rescue us. So we have a special treat today. If you'll look up there, we're going to have a slideshow from our week at Vacation Bible School.
hey, well, we were supposed to have music. Oh, gosh. <laughs> much better with the music, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, so let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for Piper and for all the kids, all the kids who are at Vacation Bible School and all the kids everywhere. Thank you for all those who helped us. Thank you for rescuing us in every situation and just letting us know that you are there. In your name we pray. Amen. This is our time of service where we ask for joys or concerns. Does anyone have a joy they would like to give us this morning? Nobody? It's not quite as hot today, but it's supposed to get up a little bit higher. I have a joy. All right, Ronnie. I have my surgery tomorrow and I'm ready to do it and get it done with That's a joy and a concern, right? <laughs> All right, and we'll keep you as a concern and a joy. Jimmy? Today is Vernon Rich's 85th birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Vernon. <laughs> oh, and Ed Thomason has a birthday coming up real soon, too. Ed Thomason has a birthday coming up? He already had it, Monday. Oh, he's already had that. That's old news. But happy birthday anyway. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Well, I have a birthday on the 28th. On the 28th, we have another birthday. <laughs> Any others? He's 30 <laughs> That's going to keep you out of trouble for sure. <laughs> hey, Jim. Uh-huh. Wednesday will be Sue's birthday. Wednesday is Sue's birthday? She will not have five. Serious issues going on there. It's on his right leg, and 
He is home. Okay, good. We'll keep him in our prayers. Yeah. <laughs> we are thankful for Tim and remind him to take water with him. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, he um, was in the woods and kind of got dehydrated and had to end up in the hospital with two bags of IV fluids to get him back to good health. One more. Yes. I'll be 65 uh, July the 24th. Wow. And God has blessed me with good genes. I still look out my uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? I want to also remember the um, families and friends of the people um, in Branson on the duck boat that um, capsized and killed 17 of them. Um, one family, I think, had nine members of their family get killed, so that was a pretty tragic thing there, too. Anybody have any else? Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Ronnie Morton, is um, had his cancer's come back, and he is he in the hospital? He is. Okay. And then, of course, Ronnie Crawford will keep him in our prayers, too, for his surgery to be successful and quick. Anyone else? All right, well, let's go to um, the Lord with our prayers. Lord, we lift up all those who are hurting today. We especially want to keep in mind those that have been mentioned in prayer or those that are not mentioned and that we know of that need your help. We lift up those in physical pain, those who are dealing with marital problems, problems with their children, medical uncertainties, or other problems. We don't always understand why things happen to us or a loved one, but help us to have the faith to know that no matter what happens, you are always by our side. You are our comforter in time of need, giving us hope for the future. Thank you for bringing us all together today as a church family. Thank you for our similarities and our differences that we enjoy. Bless our time together worshiping you, learning more about you, and being there for someone who needs to know they are loved. Amen. And would you please join me in the Lord's Prayer? It's either printed in the bulletin or on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen the scripture for today is from 1 peter chapter 2 verses 21 through 25 for god called you to do good even if it means suffering just as christ suffered for you he is your example, and you must follow in his steps. He never sinned nor deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds you are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And would the ushers please come down for the morning offering? Dear Lord, every day you provide for us. Every day we experience your love in some way. We are grateful that you give us hope and faith. Accept these gifts we give today as a small way of us giving back to you. Use them to do your will in helping us to show your love to others in our community. Amen. How can I say thanks 
for the things you have done for me, things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love to me, the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am or ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory, to God be the glory.
please be seated. If you would, open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 53. We'll be reading from verses 1 through 10. Isaiah 53, 1 through 10. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed His powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about His appearance, nothing to attract us to Him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on Him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet He never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shears, He did not open His mouth. Unjustly condemned, He was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream, but he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong, and he had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life. And the Lord's good plan will prosper in His hands. The Word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds May they be truly and utterly faithful to Your Word, O Lord our God. And may we see who Jesus is. May we see what He did for us on the cross. And may we live our lives out for His glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we were at a Sunday school party last night and uh, some of uh, the guys there uh, started telling some jokes. Uh, started telling some Boudreaux and Thibodeau jokes. You know, you've all heard Boudreaux Thibodeau jokes. A couple of told some little Johnny jokes. No, I'm not telling your jokes. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, I'm telling a different joke that uh, if I wasn't telling today, I could have told last night. Uh, so uh, little Johnny, you all know little Johnny, uh, he was having a lot of trouble in school with math, and, and uh, so his mom took him to a new school uh, so that he could learn about math. It was a Catholic school, uh, and he'd never uh, been to a Catholic school before, a Catholic church. And, uh, he was there, and so he went to math class, and, and the teacher said, well, little Johnny, uh, I, I, I want you to turn in your homework. He goes, I didn't do my homework. She said, little Johnny, doing your homework is the most important thing you can do to learn math. And she said, I want you to go in that room in there and I want you to sit quiet for a few minutes and I want you to think about why you didn't do your homework. Uh, and um, he was like, okay. So he went into that room and, and, and after a, about, oh, 15, 20 minutes, he comes running back into the, to the, uh, his classroom. He says, teacher, I'm going to do my homework. I, I promise you, I'm never not going to do it again. I'm always going to do my homework. I'm going to get straight A's. I'm never ever going to have bad grades in here ever again. And she looked at little Johnny and she's like, little Johnny, I mean, well, what got into you? Why, 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 why do you want to do your homework now? 
He said, well, I saw that y'all nailed that last kid up on that plus sign, and I don't want to do, do that. I don't want to be that kid. Uh, I can remember going to uh, Catholic Church when I was young uh, for a funeral, and, and uh, I, I noticed the, the crucifix, and, and I was there with my mom, and I was like, well, Mom, you know, why is it in the Catholic Church that they always have Jesus on the cross? Uh, and, and you see his suffering, you see his pain that he's going through as he's on the cross. And, and how come in our church uh, we have uh, an empty cross? Why is, why is that that, that we have uh, the empty cross and, and they have Jesus on the, cro on, on, on the cross? And, and she uh, uh, you know, leaned over to me and she said, Well, uh, in the Catholic Church they, they want to uh, uh, emphasize Jesus' suffering, His death, and, and the blood that was shed for you and, and His sacrifice on the cross. And the, They want to remember uh, what Jesus Christ did on the cross and how He died for you on that and, and on, the, on there. And, and, and in our church, the cross is empty because we, we celebrate the resurrection. We celebrate the, the fact that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead uh, and that uh, he, he has been risen so that we can have new life and life abundant uh, and all of that. And, and I was like, oh, that, that's great. And, you know, we've got to have both sides uh, of the story. We've got to have uh, Jesus' suffering. We have to have Jesus' resurrection to get a full picture uh, of, of what is going on uh, with, with us being saved in our lives. Uh, being changed. We can't just have the suffering. We've also got to have the resurrection. Uh, and one of the pictures of, of what Jesus did for us on the cross, uh, you know, it's funny that whenever we talk about uh, Jesus and how He died, and, and the apostles did that too in the, in the Gospels and, and in the letters, I mean, they, they would come back to the prophet Isaiah and they, they would see how Jesus fulfilled what the prophet Isaiah had said about a suffering servant. Uh, and this passage in particular, you know, uh, whenever uh, we have Good Friday services, we go and we read uh, these passages from Isaiah 53. Uh, and and uh, the communion ritual goes back and, and looks at how Jesus was the suffering servant uh, for us, dying for our sins and, and, and all that He did uh, for us on the cross. And, and uh, you know, when we look at this passage... Uh, the first picture that pops into my mind, and probably yours as you were reading through the Bible, when you read through this passage uh, this week as you were going through your daily readings, how many of y'all, the first picture that came into your mind was Jesus Christ? How many of y'all? Uh, all of you are, well, I didn't read this week. Is what uh, a lot of people are, are doing uh, this, this morning. But uh, the, the first thing, when I read this passage, the first thing that jumps into my mind is this is exactly what went on with Jesus Christ. Uh, now the prophet Isaiah uh, probably wasn't talking about uh, Jesus Christ, but yet Jesus Christ fulfilled what the prophet Isaiah said. And over and over and over through the New Testament, you'll read ex from this this uh, chapter in particular, they go back and they show, uh, you, you, we saw that in, in 1 Peter, how 1 Peter went back and showed uh, that verse, how, how Jesus fulfilled uh, through His life, through His suffering on the cross, uh, how that brings us new life. And it's not until we can see that that's what Jesus did for us that our life can be different, that our life can be changed, that our life can be something other than uh, what it was before. And it's not until we see that Jesus died for our sins that we too can, can have that abundant life. I mean, uh, if you look at this, uh, you know, it, it, it describes what Jesus did. A man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief and we turned our backs on Him and looked the other way. That's exactly what happened in Jesus' life. The people turned their backs on Jesus and looked the other way. He was despised and we didn't care. Yet it was our weaknesses He carried. It was our sorrows that weighed Him down. And we thought His troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for His own sins. But He was pierced for our rebellion. Crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be made whole. That's one of the 
uh, pictures in uh, the, the passion of Jesus Christ of, of how brutal that beating of Jesus Christ it just sticks in my mind uh, through that. And, and as I look at that, I just feel sorrow for my own sin and my own grief. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. As all of us like sheep, we have strayed. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on Him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shears, He did not open His mouth. Unjustly condemned, He was led away. A picture of exactly what went on through the life of Jesus Christ. He was beaten, He was whipped, and He was put on a cross and died the most agonizing death known to mankind. He died a most excruciating death where the Word came from crucifixion. Uh, excruciating means from the cross. And if you've ever had excruciating pain, it's not anywhere close to what Jesus Christ went through to die for your sins. And we've got to know the good news about that story is that God came into the world to die for us, for our sins, for the forgiveness of all those sins. And, and as we give our lives to Him, our life changes and is different. There's a story in Acts, one of the first times that someone hears the good news uh, is the story of Philip. Acts 8, chapter 25, it says this, As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down to the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to, to Gaza. So he started out, and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch, a great authority under the Candake, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and he was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go over and walk along beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of Scripture was reading was this, He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before the shears and did not open his mouth, he was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with this scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus Christ. And as they rode along, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop. And they went down in the water. And Philip baptized him. Isn't that amazing that God used that Scripture from the prophet Isaiah to bring in a first convert to Jesus Christ. It was when the eunuch learned what Jesus Christ did for him. It was when the eunuch learned that God forgave his sins through Jesus Christ. It was when uh, the eunuch learned that Jesus Christ was beaten and whipped and put on a cross for his sins that he gave his life to God and his life was forever changed. Uh, a friend of mine told me that he first learned about Jesus Christ through the movie The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, how many of y'all have seen or read the books by C.S. Lewis, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Uh, and in that book, uh, it tells a story of, of uh, four kids going into this magical world that was created by uh, the lion Aslan. Uh, and in that story, one of the humans uh, does something that he, he betrays his brothers and sisters and betrays all of uh, the people in Narnia. Uh, and because he did that, uh, the evil queen had the right to kill the little boy. The queen had the right to take that little boy's life, to, to end the life that, that uh, because he, he, he betrayed all of those people. 
And she was demanding his life. Well, Aslan, Aslan says, no, don't take his life. Take mine. I will take the place of that little boy. And, and, and he, he remembers vividly as he watched uh, the lion, uh, as he watched Aslan, the lion, having his mane sheared and, and all of the creatures whipping and laughing and screaming and, and tying him to the table. And, and, and as they, they, they took the dagger and they stabbed it into Aslan's body, uh, for the first time in his life, he realized what Jesus Christ had done for him. It was through that story uh, that he, for the first time, realized that he was guilty. That he should have died because of his sins. That he had trespassed and that he was guilty, but yet God sent Jesus Christ into the world to die for those sins. He sent Jesus Christ into the world to take those sins away. He took, sent Jesus Christ into the world so that he could be healed. And it was from those, those wounds, from those whips, from those beatings, from that cross that His life was now different and changed. It was from Jesus' sacrifice that He was no longer guilty. And it was from that sacrifice that He was raised to new life. Maybe you have never thought about Jesus being wounded for your transgressions. Maybe you had never thought about Jesus Christ being put on the cross and His blood being shed for what you have done. Maybe you've never thought about Jesus Christ being wounded and, and despised and, and, sh and His blood shed and, and put on that cross in an excruciating way so that your sins could be forgiven. It's not until that moment where you can grasp hold of that fact that Jesus Christ's blood was shed to cover all of your sins so that you can be white as snow. It's not until that moment that you can start to live that new life through Him. It, it's funny that for most of us, uh, we probably have some form of jewelry that is a cross. How many of you have a cross necklace or cross earrings? or you have crosses on your wall at your home, uh, or uh, you might even hang a cross from your rearview mirror, uh, rear view mirror uh, in your car. Uh, you know, we, we carry around with us a cross, uh, a symbol of the death penalty, a symbol of what the world did to try to take away good. And it's that symbol that gives us that life. It's what Jesus Christ, that, that strange man on the cross did. It's those wounds that, that He took on the cross in His hands and in His feet and in His side. It's those wounds that, that He had. It's those, those scourging that He had taken from the Roman soldiers. It's that, that that thorn of the crown of thorns that was placed on his head and, and the blood that was shed it was his death on the cross that keeps you from dying and it's not until that moment uh, that you accept that that you won't have real life the apostle paul uh, put it this way he said as for me in Galatians 6, verse 14, he says, May I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified. And the world's interest in me has also died. Isn't that an interesting way to put it? Because of the cross of Jesus Christ, my interest in the world has been crucified. And it's no longer the most important thing in the world. What's most important is now my relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, and just as little Johnny's life changed when he saw that little boy placed on that uh, 
addition sign. Our life too can be changed when we grab hold of the cross and make it our own. When, when we say to God, God, I want to follow You in Your ways. I want to be Your servant. Because the suffering servant died for me and for my sins. And it's by Your wounds that we are healed. And it's because of Jesus' wounds, not only are we healed when we die, we're also healed today. We are healed by His blood. We are healed by that relationship. And now we live into that new life in Jesus Christ. Have you grabbed hold of the true meaning of the cross? Have you grabbed hold of the fact that Christ was beaten and died and whipped and put on a cross for all of your sins, whatever those sins are, whatever you've done, they're forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. And because they're forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ, now we live our life to God's glory and God's way and God's will. Will you grab hold of that cross today? Will you search out that relationship with God? Will you ask God to, to give you that power to overcome sin? And may you allow that sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for you. And will you serve others because of it? That cross is not just a piece of wood that we look at on Sunday mornings or we wear around our neck or we put in our ears. It ought to be something that we grab hold of. It ought to be something that we celebrate. It ought to be something that we remember what Jesus Christ did for us. We ought to remember the sacrifice, the suffering, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in such a way that our life is never, ever, ever the same as it was before we held on to that cross of Jesus Christ. Make Him your Lord and Savior. Live out your life to His glory. Put off the ways of the world and put on the ways of Jesus Christ. Boast about nothing, nothing except the cross of Jesus Christ. And no matter what you've gone through in life, or what you're going through in life. His wounds can heal and help and empower you. And if you don't know that, if you, don't, if you haven't seen what Christ has done for you, may Christ open your eyes today. May Christ open your eyes to what God did for you. May God open your eyes to what God is doing in your life and in your midst. And may you receive that healing touch from that man on the cross. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank You so much that You sent Your Son Jesus Christ into the world. We're so sorry that the world despised and hated Him. We're so sorry that the world turned away and they tried to destroy you by killing your son. We thank you that the blood of Jesus Christ was shed on the cross, that he was wounded for our transgressions, and that even though we should be guilty because of the cross of Jesus Christ, we are set free. Help us to receive that freedom today. Help us to receive that forgiveness that comes from the blood of Jesus Christ. May we live our lives so that we don't waste one single drop. And may we see that sacrifice He made for us. And we see the seriousness of our sinfulness. So serious. That Jesus died an excruciating death. So 
that those sins could be forgiven. Forgive us, we pray this morning. Help us to see Jesus Christ on the cross and how He sacrificed for us. And we thank You that He was raised on the third day so that we could have new life and life abundant. It is in Your Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. During our last hymn, we open the altar for you to pray. You can come pray for as long as you like. Uh, If you need me to pray with you, come tell me. Otherwise, I'm just going to let you pray at the altar by yourself. Uh, Maybe you heard the good news this morning that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and you want to give your life back to Him. You can come down during this song, ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Uh, If you've never been baptized, we can baptize you this morning. Um, Maybe you've been visiting this church for a while and you'd like to be part of this church family. There's a card in your pew rack. You can fill that out. Bring that down with you. uh, Become part of this church family. Uh, If you have questions about joining the church, I'd love to sit down and talk to you about what that means. Call me during the week. We'll get together and uh, we'll talk about what that means to uh, join the church. However God is inviting you to respond, we pray that you will. But let's all stand together and sing our last hymn. here. Uh, If you'd like to connect with the church in a new way as a visitor, you can text hello to 318-225-7229. That way you can stay connected with our church uh, in a uh, different way. Uh, And uh, if you have any questions about the church, feel free to call me. I'd love to uh, talk to you about what that means uh, to be a member here. Um, I hope that you'll be in prayer for all those in our church who uh, are hurting. As you heard earlier this week, take home your uh, bulletin and uh, be sure to pray for all those prayer concerns that are in your bulletin. But let us go now into the world, allowing the cross of Jesus Christ to transform us, to change us, to challenge us, and to help us to be free from all the sins of the world. And may we live our lives by the power of that same cross, allowing other people to know who Jesus is through us. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ we go. Amen. Amen.